Okay, welcome to part two of 1.2 photochemical smog. Um, in this part, hopefully it's going to be a shorter one because we are just focusing on the last dot point that you can see here. Describe and write equations showing how catalytic converters reduce the quantities of nitrogen oxide uh, oxides generated by motor vehicles. We we'll also look at um, how catalytic converters work as well. The slide that we are going for is this one to start with. Um, so catalytic converters are attached um, to the exhaust system of cars. It's regulated and you have to have it. Um, and yeah, you'd have to have something like this as part of the uh, exhaust pipe. Um, you can see the honeycomb structure that's um, kind of zoomed into it. Oh, you can't see it. No one. Uh, you can see the uh, zoomed up image of honeycomb structure uh, as that gold uh, kind of bend, band, sorry, band there. Um, that's where um, atoms and the molecules can interact um, and react with each other. Um, it's a bit hard to see, but what's going in there is the uh, hydrogen, sorry, hydrocarbon, um, carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide. And what comes out is the uh, um, water, H2O, CO2, carbon dioxide, and N2, which is nitrogen. Um, let me just go back one slide there. So catalytic converters um, convert something that's harmful to less harmful. So inside there, a honeycomb structure, uh, coated with metals that catalyze the reaction that converts carbon monoxide, unburned hydrocarbons, and nitrogen oxides into carbon dioxide, steam, water, um, and also nitrogen uh, gas itself. So, well, what you see behind me is the uh, three equations for that. Starting with carbon monoxide, it reacts with oxygen on the surface of the catalytic converters, the membrane, um, and that gets converted to CO2. It's less harmful compared to CO. Yeah, that's a, you know, uh, invisible gas and silent killer. And carbon dioxide is less harmful, although it still com uh, contributes to the uh, um, global warming. Here is the unburned carbon, sorry, unburned hydrocarbon. This is octane. Octane is the uh, main component of petrol, so that's why it's used there as an example. Um, this is not a combustion, combustion, but still bonds with oxygen because that comes from the air and the uh, catalytic converter does this conversion. So hydrocarbon has carbon, that becomes carbon dioxide. Hydrogen part, that becomes water molecules. Um, I put liquid, but I, I would say that's, that would be gas um, to start with. Um, but as, yeah, as it comes out from the um, exhaust pipe, it just becomes liquid. And that's what you see, uh, water trickling down from exhaust pipe, yeah? And you also have NO gas, which is something that gets generated um, in the, uh, the high temperature that's provided by car engines. If there was carbon monoxide, which there would be, because not, more, not, most, not all of the uh, uh, hydrocarbon will burn properly. In some cars, like in you know, older cars, uh, the efficiency of the engine is not really good. So more um, unburned hydrocarbon would be present. Um, and also the amount of CO, carbon monoxide, would still be there. But if there was um, catalytic converter, NO, nitric oxide and carbon monoxide can bond with each other. Both are harmful, but can be converted into nitrogen, N2, and also CO2 gas. Nitrogen gas, I mean 80% of air that we breathe in is this, nitrogen gas, right? And carbon dioxide is less harmful compared to carbon monoxide or nitric oxide. So there you go. That's the conversion that um, it can do. Um, 
and also going back to the original table uh, where you have to be able to do certain things it said something about um, you need to be able to explain describe I think both um, the um, uh, effect of um, having catalytic converter in reducing nitric oxide hence the um, photochemical smog wouldn't occur hopefully now few notes are there as well on the next slide the efficiency depends on the temperature if the uh, if you just started the engine and if it if it didn't warm up enough and it started driving uh, the efficiency of catalytic converter will drop meaning you you would still be um, releasing nitric oxide carbon monoxide and unburnt hydrocarbon to the atmosphere it also depends on oxygen concentration so at high altitude or if you're not driving fast enough if you're just idling um, because if you're idling you are not sending air into the car um, so amount of oxygen would not be enough for it to be able to do the conversion well at the end of the day it depends on how much oxygen is present yeah so amount of oxygen that's present is fairly crucial uh, for this conversion to occur and also air to fuel ratio it's the same thing though um, if you had a lot more um, fuel that's coming through um, I think the recommended ratio is 1 to 14 so 1 liter of fuel uh, you would require 14 liters of oxygen oh sorry air, air 14 liters of air so if this um, amount of oxygen was not there um, then you know you will still be seeing um, unburned hydrocarbons left in the fume um, here's a summary that you can see I'll just put this on what you need to be able to do is to write equations for the formation of nitrogen oxides which is NO and NO2 which are I should say um, describe and write equations showing the role of nitrogen oxides in the formation of ozone in the troposphere thirdly you need to be able to describe the harmful effects of nitrogen oxides and ozone in the troposphere and finally there you go describe and write equations showing how catalytic converters reduce the quantities of nitrogen oxides generated by motor vehicles so what's important was especially the last equation here then if you had catalytic converters working well amount of NO will be reduced as it can convert um, harmful chemicals into less harmful ones all right that's about it we will also look at uh, what's called ion craft which is where you can see that um, aluminum um, made sorry a craft that's made out of aluminum and some uh, wooden pieces uh, with high voltage um, yeah currency going through which converts air molecules into ions and that creates an up, up, upwards thrust and it can fly and finally we also look at the, how Top Gear people when Top Gear was still on um, at the high altitude and how their cars got affected by it we will look at what's under the hood well we'll just guess it anyway but that's the plan for the lesson um, yeah so yeah that's the uh, end of um, photochemical smog subchapter I'll see you in the next video